For the first two years, everything seemed to be fine. It was just like a fairy tale marriage. However, as they approached the third year of their marriage, Michelle noticed that Nicholas had started pulling away emotionally. One day, she sat Nicholas down, had a long conversation with him, explained to him her feelings about the marriage and how she felt like it was suffering. Nicholas quickly dismissed Michelle's concern and told her that everything is fine and you're just being overly sensitive about the situation. Michelle was devastated at Nicholas's insensitivity, but she decided to stay in the marriage, do all she could to, to make it work. For the next three years, Michelle tried to do her best to keep her marriage together until finally she realized something that she had been noticing for a long time. Her marriage was over, and Nicholas was never going to change. She determined that divorce was her only option. But one of her main concerns was, how will I make it with these two small children? How will I make it with these two small children and without my husband? These children that they had conceived when she decided to stay another three years. Against the odds, Shell stepped out on faith, finalized her divorce with Nicholas and moved into an apartment with her two small children. About three months later, a gentleman noticed her walking through the complex. He had been noticing her for some time, and he got up the nerve to ask her out on a date, and she, she accepted the invitation. Over the next four months, Michelle and Dwayne uh, love for one another. It grew, and it grew, and it grew to a point that Dwayne asked for Michelle's hand in marriage. Michelle gladly accepted Dwayne's offering for marriage. She had always wanted to be married. She didn't want to be divorced, and so she gladly accepted his offer. Three months later, they were married and started living together in their new home. Well, when they were dating, Dwayne had told Michelle that he wanted children, and in less than three years, Michelle had two more children. In the meantime, even though Michelle and Nicholas couldn't make it together as husband and wife. They still remained friends, and their friendship grew, and it grew to the extent that they had an exceptional friendship that allowed Michelle to introduce Nicholas to her best friend. Natalie fell in love with Nicholas, married him, and gave Nicholas two additional children. In the fifth year of Michelle and Dwayne's marriage, Michelle got a call one day from a woman who said that Nicholas had stopped sending her money for their 10-year-old son and she was putting him on child support. Three weeks later, Michelle got another call from another woman who told her that she was Nicholas's ex-wife and he needed to come see his twin sons because the sons really miss their daddy. I wish I could say that what I have described is just simply a fairy tale, a farce, something that happens possibly even in a fiction movie on television. The reality of the day is what I have just described, this scenario that I've built, plays out in America every day. Ideally, we love it when a man and a woman get married, have children, and stay together for the rest of their lives. That's the ideal. But the reality, my brothers and sisters, that I need you to understand today is that we live in a broken world. And because we live in a broken world, we have broken families. And sometimes families, they get broken to the extent that husband and wives go their separate ways through what we call divorce. Sometimes divorced husbands choose to remarry another wife, and sometimes divorced wives choose to remarry another husband, and often these two people bring children from a previous marriage into the second marriage that many call now a stepfamily, either a blended family. Sometimes we have to understand that these people who are coming together make up this blended family, 
they face some unique challenges that first families may never face. What are some of the unique challenges that blended families may face that first families don't possibly ever face? Ron Deal said that blended families swim within a different ocean that has a different undercurrent than the rest of first families. One of the undercurrents of a blended family is loss and sadness. What may have created the blended family was death or divorce. Because of the loss, the reality is there's grief that family members need to go through. And when family members don't take time to go through the grieving process, they bring unaddressed grief into the second marriage. Parents must make sure that children are given time to grieve the pain of that loss, be it divorce or death. And they need time to figure out this issue of loyalty. And you gotta understand, you gotta understand parent and step-parent, death does not automatically sever the loyalty of this child toward the biological parent. Children develop loyalty to their biological parent and they don't need to be pressured into yielding their loyalty to the biological parent that they love so much and wish was still in the household or they wish that parent was still alive. It would be very insensitive of you to speak to that child and say, you, you ought to be able to love your step-parent because your biological parent is dead and gone now. Yeah, but they still love that parent even though the parent is in the grave. We have to understand today that blended families need some special attention. And Ron Deal, I appreciate this specialist in regards to blended families on the day because he said also of blended families that blended families swim in a different ocean that has sharks. And one of the sharks is an ex-spouse. We see it all the time when an ex-spouse causes possibly baby mama drama to the point that the ex-spouse appears to live in the house with the blended family even though the ex-spouse has a different address. You're going to catch that in a minute possibly. Another shark, another shark, another shark in this ocean for blended families oftentimes is money and material possessions. You can have two people to come together and they got children that they bring together and one of the parents may possibly say everything that I'm bringing into this marriage I'm leaving for my children not your children this shark has bitten a lot of blended families Rondeo said again that blended families swim in the ocean where there's an undercurrent there's sharks he says but the water is a whole lot cooler for blended families why is it cooler for blended families than first families. Well, in a first family, you got everybody coming together for the first time. But in a blended family, you got people coming together who's already been together with somebody else, and in that, in that family, trust was broken. And now they're coming into a second family, and many are coming, the parent, the step-parent, the children, stepchildren are coming into the blended family with their guard up because the water is a whole lot cooler. Nobody is really quick to trust oftentimes when people are coming together in a blended family. Children have their guard up because they are hesitant to give their loyalty and their love to somebody that they think may walk out on them too. You see, you gotta consider there's some children who are in blended families and this is not their first family, this is not their second family. This is not their third family. Possibly this is their fourth family. And they've had several parents to walk out on them. And maybe they got their guard up. Now, the water is a whole lot cooler. Someone said that blended families are messy, complicated, and exhausting. This reality causes us to raise the question today, is there any hope for blended families? Is there? 
Is there any hope for blended families? One of the things that we need to understand today is that managing a blended family is not easy, but managing a blended family is essential. I thank God for our text today. In Luke chapter 1, verse 35, the angel Gabriel told a young virgin girl named Mary that she was going to have a child through the power of the Holy Spirit. And this son would be the son of the living God. Thus God would be his heavenly father. Since Jesus was conceived of the power of the Holy Spirit, that meant that Joseph was not his biological father. And since Joseph was not his biological father, Jesus was not his biological son. Joseph was Jesus' stepfather. I'd like to suggest today that Joseph is being put in a position where he has to manage a blended family. This would be a blended family that would face many challenges. These challenges would meet them head on, and they would have to overcome those challenges. That's why the central idea today is managing blended family is not easy, but managing blended family is essential. And the question that I want to raise today and then answer very quickly as possible is, what does it take to manage blended family? Well, you got to trust God in at least three ways. You got to trust God to handle what's going on in your mind. I want to go to Matthew for this, something that I read earlier, Matthew chapter 1, verse number 20. We learn that Joseph, he's not doing well in his mind. The reason why he's not doing it well in his mind is because he's thinking about, he's processing, he's trying to get his mind wrapped around the news that Mary is pregnant by way of the Holy Spirit. Verse 18 informs us that before the wedding ceremony, before the consummation of the marriage through sex, Mary is already pregnant. Verse 19, we learn that Joseph was at the point where he considered divorcing Mary to save her from the possibility of public shame. Guess what else? He possibly wanted to save her from, from being stoned because people would think since Joseph was not Jesus' biological father, then maybe she slept with another man. And because of that, she committed adultery. And because she committed adultery, now she's available for stoning. Joseph is trying to wrap his mind around what's going on. They're already engaged. This is just as binding as marriage. The dowry has already been paid. The only thing that's left is the ceremony and the consummation of the marriage through sexual intercourse. And as Joseph struggles in his mind, the angel shows up, I thank God, and says to Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. The angel gave Joseph a word to help him deal with with what was going on in his mind. I'd like to suggest today that there are some people who are confronted with the challenge of managing a blended family and you're troubled in your mind. When you consider some of the unique challenges that I mentioned earlier suggested by Ron Deal, we can see why it's easy for some people to be troubled in their mind, fearful even, of trying to manage a blended family. But guess what? You're not God. And because you're not God, you're not going to be able to see how it's going to be able to work out. Joseph couldn't see how this was going to be able to work out. And you who are charged with managing a blended family, you can't see a year or two four or five, 20 years, you can't see that because you are not God. But my word to you today is you don't have to be God. All you need to know is God has given you 
God has given you the word to get into this blended family. That's, that's the key right there. It's not you just going into the blended family on your own, but it's God leading you into this blended family. And if God is leading you into a blended family, God has a word for you. You don't have to be afraid of how it's going to work out because God already knows how it's going to work out. Remember I told you an angel brought this message to Joseph? An angel is just a messenger. And since an angel is just a messenger, the angel says, don't be afraid. Well, actually, that's God. Since the angel is just a messenger, the angel is carrying a message from God. God is the one saying to Joseph, don't be afraid. And guess what? Today, you're hearing from another messenger. And with what I'm saying to you today, it's not so much me saying it, but you got to hear God saying to you today, don't be afraid of going into a blended family that God is leading you into, that God already knows how it's going to work out. Managing a blended family is not easy. Managing a blended family, it is essential. There's another area of trust that we got to talk about. And the area of trust is if you're going to manage a blended family, you got to trust God to give your role meaning and purpose. I'm still in Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. The angel says to Joseph, she's going to bear a son. You'll call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Even though Joseph was not Jesus' biological father, he still had a role to play in Jesus' life. That meant that Joseph, number one, within his role, he couldn't consummate the marriage until after Jesus was born. And then according to Matthew chapter 1 and verse 25, the text says that Joseph carried out his role. The text says that he kept Mary a virgin. I know what the, I know what the Catholic Church says, but the text says that he kept Mary a virgin until she gave birth to a son and he called his name Jesus. Joseph had a role to play. Can I argue this thing about Joseph having a role to play at a time when Herod wanted to kill the baby Jesus and he started killing all of little baby, two years and young. The angel came to Joseph in a dream and told him to take Joseph and Mary down to Egypt. Matthew chapter 2 verse 13 through 15. And when Herod died, the angel of the Lord shows up again to Joseph in a dream, and he tells him to leave Egypt and go to Israel. Matthew 2, chapter 19, excuse me, verse 19, 21. And since there was trouble in Israel, the Lord guided Joseph. The Bible says in Matthew 2, 22 through 23, the angel, the angel told Joseph to get out of Egypt for Israel, but once he gets into Israel, the Lord guides Joseph to a place in Galilee called Nazareth. And by Joseph doing and playing his role, later on in another gospel writer by the name of John, chapter 1 and verse 47, Nathaniel is able to raise the question, can anything good come out of Nazareth. The only way that he was able to ask that question is that Jesus had to be and be of a place called Nazareth. But the way that he got to Nazareth was Joseph had to fulfill his role as Jesus' stepfather. And while they are in Nazareth, Joseph' role is not over. He's got to provide shelter over Jesus' head. He's got to give him food. He's got to make sure there's safety. And he's got to make sure that there's parental guidance as his earthly father within his stepfather role. That ought to be a word for somebody here today who's trying to make it in a blended family. You can make it, but you have to understand your role in a blended family, especially if you're the step parent. 
The children may still have their biological parents. Sometimes a woman may get a divorce, remarry a gentleman that treats her like a queen. Puts her in a point where she's radiating and she's just as happy as can be. And often mothers want their children who are coming into a blended family to feel the same way. It's critical that parents in blended families remember that children don't have a choice in the matter. Step parents need to understand that you brought these children into this and they didn't have, they didn't, they didn't get to have a voice in the matter because for some, if they had a had a voice in the matter, they would have told you don't do it. But they're in it now. And you gotta be sensitive to your limitations as the step parent within the blended family. And you got to understand your role. You're not replacing. The biological parent, that's not your role to replace the biological parent. Joseph's role was not to replace Jesus' biological father. His role was to support Jesus in his relationship with his biological father. If you don't believe me, I can show it to you in scripture. Joseph supported Jesus in his relationship with his biological father. One of the defining moments in the Gospels is in Luke chapter 2 in verse 48-49 when Jesus' parents found him after a three-day search. Went to Jerusalem to carry out their responsibilities and duties and the question is raised to Jesus. Do you not know your father and I, this is his mother talking, have been looking for you? And Luke records Jesus' profound response. Jesus says, do you not know that I've been, one translation says, I've been about my father's house, but then another translation says, do you not know I've been about my father's business? And he's not talking, he's not talking about Joseph. But even though his stepfather, the text says, did not understand exactly what Jesus was entailing within this statement. He still supported Jesus in his relationship because he didn't scold him. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't browbeat Jesus for talking about being with his heavenly father and being about his heavenly father. He just simply supported Jesus in his relationship with his biological father. How do I know that? <laughs> because when you look at verse 51, it says that Jesus willingly subjected himself to his stepfather and his mother's parental role. They let him do what he needed to do. And Jesus, as the stepson to Joseph, let his stepfather play the role that he needed to play in his life. That's a word. I'm moving to the third trust, but that's a word. It's a powerful lesson for blended families where a step parent may be struggling within his or her role in the child's life who deserves to have a loyal and loving relationship with his or her biological parent. The step parent can, within that relationship, provide support in the home and at the same time offer support in the child maintaining a loving relationship with his or her biological parents. Step parents have to understand and know that even though you're not the child's biological parent, God has given you a role that has meaning, purpose, and significance. We see this with Joseph's example. Managing blended family is not easy. But managing a blended family is essential. Got to let you go. Here's the third area of trust. You got to trust God. Got to trust God. I'm not trying to think of what to say. I'm pausing for effect. You got to trust God because I want you to get this. You got to trust God to bless what looks like a mess. If you, if you go back to Luke chapter 1 and verse 35, and you look at Matthew chapter 1 and verse number 20, Luke 1, 35, Matthew 1, 20, 
Mary and Joseph were told that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit going to come up on you. That's what he says in Luke 135. And Mary was conceived in hers of the Holy Spirit. That's what the angel says in Matthew 1, verse 20. For both Joseph and Mary, they had to deal with this news that they are being given. Mary is perplexed. Luke 1, 27. Joseph is considering, pondering this, trying to figure it out, Matthew 1, 20. And from the outside looking in, it appears as though Joseph and Mary are placed within a messy situation. Let me build this mess a little bit further. Let me add something else that makes this look, look messy. If we read Matthew chapter 13, verse 4, 55 verse 56, we learn that Jesus had at least six half-brothers and sisters. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 55, we learn that Jesus has four half-brothers that the writer mentions by name, James, Simon, Joseph, and Judas. At verse 56, it indicates that Jesus had have sisters. Now we don't know for sure how many have sisters Jesus had because it does not mention them by name like it does his half brothers. But the text indicates that he had sisters, plural. And because he has sisters, plural, we know this, there were at least two sisters. It could have been three, it could have been four, but what we do know is it, at, it is at least two sisters. Therefore, he's got six, six half-brothers and sisters, all making up a blended family which Joseph and Mary have to manage. Man, if that's not a word for somebody here today, that's not a word for somebody listening to me right now, it may look like your blended family is a mess, but you've got to have the right perspective about your blended family. If God is bringing your blended family together, then God knows that it may look like a mess right now, but God is more than able and willing to bring something good out of what looks like a mess. How do you know that God Trevor is able to bring something good out of something that looks like a mess. If you go back to Luke chapter 1 and verse 39, you'll read something where the angel says this to Mary. He says, nothing is impossible with God because she was pondering in her mind, how is this really going to work out me having this son by the conception of the Holy Spirit? And then she and Joseph are wrestling with how is this going to work out, this blended family. But the word that God plants into the blended family is nothing is impossible with God. For the blended family that's listening to me right now, you need to know and understand that God can do the impossible. If it looks like it's a mess to you, what it looks like to God it's not so much a mess, but opportunity. And because it's a place of opportunity, it's an opportunity for God to do something that nobody thought could happen with your blended family. You may even have somebody to tell you that your blended family looked like a mess, but come back and tell them that's all right. It may look like a mess, but God can do the impossible with messy things. Even though all four of Jesus' brothers didn't believe in him before the resurrection. After the resurrection, two of his brothers, James and Jude, become leaders in the early New Testament church. Two of his brothers wrote two of the letters that we find in the New Testament. James wrote a New Testament letter, and Jesus' brother Jude wrote a New Testament letter. Out of a blended family, came two individuals that we are still talking about and that we read their words to this day. Out of 
a blended family. Become a man huh? who will grow in wisdom and stature, favor with God and men. Out of a blended family, the world will come to know a man who came preaching repentance for the kingdom of God is at hand. Out of a blended family would come a man who would have compassion, sympathy, and empathy on those who were blind, lame, deaf, diseased, and dead. Out of a blended family would come a man who would finally one day set his face toward Jerusalem to the point that he would allow them to apprehend him, beat him, lead him up to an old rugged cross, crucify him, and out of a blended family would be a man who was stretched wide, hung high, who would die from the sixth to the ninth hour until he finally said, it is finished, <laughs> gave up the ghost, laid his head in the locks of his shoulders, died, buried in a borrowed tomb, but out of a blended family, it's the same man who came out of the grave saying all power in heaven and earth is in my hand. Out of a blended family, we're still talking about a man who is able to save from the guttermost to the uttermost. Out of a blended family, we're still talking about a man who can take your sadness and turn it into joy. Out of a blended family, we're still talking about a man who can dry every one of your tears. Out of a blended family, we're still talking about a man that we call the Rose of Sharon, the Lily of the Valley, my bright and morning star, my beginning and my end, my Alpha and Omega, all that we talk about came out of a blended family. Don't you look down anymore on blended and step families because out of a blended step family came the man that we know today as our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And if God would bless a blended family like this, then we as the church must also give blended families our blessings. That's the word of God today for God's people and those who are willing to hear the word of God. I pray that you got something, just one thing, out of the message. The doors of the church are open. You can come by letter, baptism, Christian experience here's the key don't think that tomorrow is promised if you feel the spirit of God impressing upon you to make a move now move now go to that website that I told you about earlier trinitymbchurch.org Go to that contact portal, fill out that information, or go to the other portal for belonging, and you can become a member of Trinity Missionary Baptist Church, even in the midst of a pandemic. I know this because over the past seven to eight months, we've had people to unite with us in the midst of a pandemic. My brothers and sisters, I have to extend that invitation. I have to let you know these opportunities that are there. We'll be waiting on your response and we'll be waiting to respond to your response. Again, may God bless you. May God continue to be with you. What should the church say and do about blended families? I know what we should do should give our blessings to those that God have brought together and to those of you who are tasked with managing a blended family. Know that managing a blended family is not easy, but managing a blended family is essential. 
Trust God. Trust him in those three ways that I shared with you. It's in Christ Jesus' name that I pray these things for you in your blended family. May God continue to be with you. Join us this week for our Midday Becoming sessions, uh, Midday Becoming and Evening session. I meant to say our Becoming sessions on Wednesday. We have one Midday and one Evening. We're still in the book of Hebrews, and we pray that you would join us, be in prayer for us in regards to the coming week and all of the challenges uh, that we will be facing on this week. Again, remember, if you're managing a blended family, trust God. Trust God to deal with that stuff in your mind, the fears you may have, trust God in regards to the meaningful purpose that he's given to your role in the blended family. And then finally, remember that last piece. Trust God to bless what may look like a mess. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we bid you God's peace. Until the next time, God bless.